Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 196. That's Uno Nueve Seis. Uno Nueve Seis. Welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today is Friday, the 17th of May, wherever you may be. If you listen to this in the past or in the future, hello, welcome. It's me, your friend. It's Friday. I'm feeling a lot better today. Um, not because it's Friday, but because it's the um, it's the culmination of a very tough couple of weeks for me. As I've mentioned previously on this podcast, I've had a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I always kind of, you know, um, how do you say? Um, I always uh, refer to myself or would think of myself as a fairly um, even killed emotional kind of guy, right? I don't necessarily have any big divots. I don't usually go on massive swings of emotional vulnerability, but the last couple of weeks have really, really tested me. And I think it might have something to do with my birthday. You know, I mentioned I hate birthdays. I'm not a birthday dude. That's very much true. Um, I don't think I don't think I'm I'm lying. It might be a little story that I'm telling myself to convince myself that I don't feel like um the pressure of life are getting to me i think that might be part of it right we have these weird stories we tell ourselves like oh i'm this person i'm that person when you keep repeating these little stories to yourself it's usually a way of you convincing yourself of something that you know deep down or intrinsically isn't true so there might be a part of me that's a little bit mm, you know anti-birthday because it, by and large normally celebrates their birthday with me you know um take out your violin i've never really had anyone reach out and ask me whether or not i want to do something for my birthday outside of my you know the people that i'd hope would say something and even then they don't say nothing right i think i could count on one hand the people that i'd expect to text me for my birthday and no one really does so um i can't really say that but also on one on one hand of it, if i look at analytically or look at you know a bit deeply and i try to um analyze it um, outside of my emotional state, I would say I'm not necessarily the most um, warm person when it comes to those kind of things, right? I don't necessarily go out of my way to make people feel like they're wanted or to make people feel like I love them or to make people feel like I cherish them in some way, shape or form, right? I think when you're the person that's always given a love, um, it's easier to then for some people to reciprocate it. But when you're not given it, especially living in London where everything's a little bit give and take, it's a bit you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It's no surprise that I don't really have anyone blowing up my line when my birthday comes around. But going back to that point, I think my dip in mood and my overall, um, you know, depression or whatever you maybe call it, it might be tied in with my birthday because I think when my birthday came around on April 25th, I think it kind of really struck me. It kind of struck home, you know, just how far away I am from doing the things I want to do. Um, not in a, not in like a bad way, but in like a very humbling way. It kind of made me think like, wow, I've got a lot of work to do, right? Because in my head, you know, sometimes when you're going for your dreams and you're striving, you're, you're kind of, um, there's a part of you that even though you, you know, you shouldn't be, but there's a part of you that's a little bit impatient, especially when you start to gather a little bit of momentum. You're like, okay, cool. Finally, people are starting to, res people are starting to understand that I'm good at what I do. People are now asking for my services or they want me to be around. They're asking for my opinion. Um, I've become like, um, the go-to person for everything that you want to do. So then naturally, you, the next thing is like, okay, when's my moment? When's my moment? When's my moment? When am I going to get, when's that suddenly I'm going to get that tada, that finally, you know, that where I kind of burst into the mainstream or I kind of um, cross over into success land or I cross over and I can finally quit my job. It never really happens, right? It's always like a slow build. It's always like a slow eventual build until you get to, even, and I'm not even sure when you get to that point whether or not you realize that you, you're just so busy working, so busy putting one foot in front of the other. You probably don't even realize when you actually get to that point of like, wow. I finally got to a place that I've always wanted to. And, you know, human nature, what happens is that along your journey, you start to then um, make new goals. You start to then have new things that you want to cross over, new uh, benchmarks you want to meet, right? And then suddenly the goal you had, you know, the humble goal you had when you were just drawing in your bedroom, on your bedroom, on your bed, is now kind of dissolved away when you've got like a, I don't know, 100 foot square, 100 square foot um, studio and you've got ease all over the place. You forget how far you've come. So I think it had something to do with my birthday. I think I was, you know, a bit depressed figuring out how far I am and how much work I need to be done. But then over the last few weeks, I've kind of, you know, settled into it. I've kind of accepted my feelings. But I've also know that that feeling of depression or hopelessness is only because I've kind of, again, I'm, a, I'm attaching an intrinsic um, expectation value to it. I'm attaching a timeline to it. And I think when I go, as soon as I go back to understanding that it's about the work and I'm appreciative of just being able to do something like this, right? I couldn't imagine a life where I was just going in and clocking in, clocking in and clocking out and just coming home. I have like another whole, a, 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 a whole other part of my life that I'm kind of trying to stoke the, 
the flames of and I'm trying to keep that going, whether it's a DJ, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a writing, photography, all this sort of stuff. I'm trying to keep those fires stoked. So that's given me hope uh, for life in general. And again, I just couldn't imagine a life um, apart from this, other than this, really. Right? I'm, I'm recording this early in the morning before I head off to work. Um, I'm gonna, and then after I finish work, I'm gonna come back home, get ready, and go and DJ at Westfield. So it's like you know, it's a great life to be living. So I have to be thankful for what I have, and just enjoy the journey, man. Enjoy the journey. Hope you enjoy the journey here with me too. So yeah, that's where I am right now, man. I'm in a good mental state, and of course it coincides with a Friday. But again, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the old like end of the week shit. I think you should be trying to uh, make your every day of your life a weekend, um, especially with the stuff that you do outside of work. And if that's not the case, then you might have to think about where you're working and you know make some changes there but that's not the time or place for this today because as you can tell i've got my clout goggles on as the kids like to call them on the internet um, which is interesting right it's, it's interesting that such an iconic piece of um of fashion right such an, an iconic accessory right made popular by you know the grunge era kurt cobain and all that kind of influences now suddenly descended into this really corny piece of apparel that kids will point at you and use it as a point of mockery to the piss out of you but you know what for me i know where this reference is coming from i have an appreciation for the music for the culture and by and large i think they look really cool so i will love them whatever you call them clout goggles um kurt cobain glasses you know wanker specs whatever they may be called i love them wanker specs <laughs> whatever they are i fucking love them and obviously you know it's just a, a casey nice that cheat so i don't keep so i don't um because I, I i'm not very good at keeping my eyes on the camera they always kind of you know drift off to the right and the left so it's a good case and i start cheat of just making sure my eyes are not dancing around this camera lens too much but for those of you listening to the podcast app you have no idea what i'm talking about so what does it matter anyway outfits on today so street wear friday today it was meant to be street wear thursday yesterday but today's gonna be street wear friday i'm gonna run through loads of cool things i've seen on the interwebs regarding street wears we're gonna talk about stuff that i like stuff that i don't like and then we're gonna keep going back and forth back and forth tab by tab tab by tab until we get to the end of the show but it's gonna be jam-packed with street wear so if you don't like street wear get up the bus um anyway so first things first on this hallowed show on the friday is um a guy that i'm familiar with somebody that i knew from the forums has now got like it's amazing to see these people that you've grown up with on the forums you know go out and do amazing things and here i am in my bedroom or in my, in my living room chatting shit into a cheap webcam into a shitty microphone hoping that the message gets out there right it makes you want to cry but it also gives you hope that if these guys that i started with on the forums have now gone on to do such amazing things well, imagine the things that i can do imagine what i could do so here we go number one um my boy uh iron coops uh from stray rats has got a collaboration out now or oh, it's got a collaboration coming up with new balance um high piece of title that stray rats delivers a joker inspired new balance 999 v3 i think it looks fucking banging not sure about you guys but i really like it actually you know what i really like how it looks I think it looks awesome. So it's a Joker inspired, loads of purple, greens, and blues. It's a 999V90V3, which a few people are doing collaboration with. I'm pretty sure I saw a collaboration um, with New Balance doing these with um, no vacancy in. So I'm not sure if this is just like a, a run they're going to do with loads of um, different kind of creative um cruise whatever and re redo the actual colorway but we're at, regardless i love the direction these kids are going in and i just think it's a cool um way to go about things especially when there's such obvious other brands to kind of collaborate with and you just you know you go out a bit out of the box you collaborate with new balance on a shoe like this i think it's always a good look um yeah so i, I think they've got apparel kind of linked to it too nice little joker tee here which looks amazing um the text reads i'm only laughing on the inside my smile is just skin deep if you could see inside i'm really crying you might join me for a for a while i think it's a poem right a joker poem looks amazing i love the little sketch illustration on the outside looks really cool um so i'm um, so it's concluding apparel they've got hoodies with uh, a really classic drawstring a hoodie with like a drawstring with like a white lining on zip lining on the inside i really like the look of that um the stray rats logo on the left breast has got sort of like an x-ray um image of a rat on the outside there it looks really cool and obviously an illustration of the actual um shoe itself that was actually quite cool i think they when they announced the actual um collaboration i remember seeing on the stray rats instagram that they just put up the picture the illustration of it of just basically that line that line drawing with it colored in and the kids were going crazy over the comments just of the line illustration which i thought was really cool right because nowadays you get leaks of people you know um who went to this who went maybe to nike or a new balance hq who are maybe at some um uh promotion or advertising agency or marketing agency um 
I'd say for the most part, and you take a picture of the actual shoe when it's on display. And you know, that's how you get to see the first image of it. But to kind of get people hyped or get people crunked over a shoe, just off a little sketch illustration that you did on the back of a hanky is fucking cool. I like that approach. Um, yeah, so a whole collaboration, I guess. Hold, I'm not sure if it's in, if, if the clothing is, is a collaboration with Stray Rack or if it's just them doing it as part of the shoe collaboration. But regardless, I love it all. Um, so you've got black shorts with ha ha written on the, on, on the front and on the left sleeve. Again, taking cues from um, loads of taking cues from you know Stray Rats kind of inspiration for the most part. Hardcore merch, like you know, they love these sort of kind of apparels, like shorts with a, with kind of logo motifs on one side, and same with the long sleeve shirts as well with on on the sleeve, and maybe a little breast logo, maybe a nice big back print. So you know, the stuff's gonna be good, especially graphic design wise. You know, Stray Rats probably have the best stuff out there. Um, again, some nice socks as well with a nice Stray Rats logo in it. I think the socks these these things will sell out really really quickly. But again, really like the look. Of of it whole collaboration there the date of it coming out is may 18th um they're gonna drop on stray rats website um so that's the that's the shoe itself there in its full glory so you've got a bit of purple some green some grays on a 999 v3 i, I wonder the differences between a 9990 um you know standard and the v3 i wonder if it's the sole or maybe the ins i wonder what it is the difference of it i can't actually tell from the what you get from the naked eye but i really like the shoe man it looks, looks amazing um sr86 new balance made in the usa yeah really really nice shoe um they've got custom insoles there as well yeah i like it man it looks fucking awesome and again that's how they got everyone hyped so this little illustration there on the outside i think that looks cool so that's due to come out may 18th 12 p.m est if you're around and you like a bit of stray rats i recommend you check it out really one of my favorite brands out there without a shadow of a doubt um next up on the list here we have uh noah uh summer 2000 and what and 19 is that is that a new collection i've already dropped or is that something that's new um oh wow okay cool so th this is noah uh spring summer 2019 let me get up here on the screen for you guys to see de -de 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 -de. I'll just get this up here boom 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 so this is no spring summer 2017 for you guys to see here. Ba, 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 ba. Should I get another screen up? Should I just do this like that? Let me just do it so this actually. Let me go here. And let's go like this because we want to get it all in, right? Boom. Okay, cool. So this is Noah uh spring summer 2019. Um again, Noah, there's no, you know, th th there's no point even kind of expanding on it. It's probably one of the pop most popular streetwear brands out there. It's it's I think it's maybe the most popular, I'd say um day-to-day -day wear i see a lot more people on the street wearing um noah hoodies especially the, the the one that came out did it come out at the beginning of this year the noah hoodie that's navy with like noah written in like really big block letter prints on just just above just below the chest i think they have it at the front and the back too it's a really nice hoodie and um, of course you know the way they dye their hoodies the construction of them the feel the quality is superb uh brendan babajan of course is um you know supreme alumni and you know some people would say he's probably part of the supreme creative design crew who are you know responsible for some of the you know most iconic pieces of supreme um i think back to that sailor jacket i had before with like the blue navy stripe blue and white stripes going across i think of the um really iconic um parker jacket i had red and cream that um, iron bondroth modeled a few seasons ago i think of some of the amazing long sleeve tees i think of some of the wallaby collaborations those were some of the that was some of the peak era supreme when brenda was around and obviously um he went off inside his own collection with noah a bit more socially conscious a little bit slower pace um more staple designs less logo motifs and stuff whatever but just really good messaging behind some of the clothing they make especially if you go on the blog he's always kind of giving really good breakdowns on what the inspiration was behind it um you know, a, you know trying to inspire kids to take action whether it's politically whether it's stuff to do with the environment a really forward-thinking uh, brand approach really for everything that he does and again i just love the the unquestionably um americana feel of the actual collection right because he's always mentioning stuff about surfing and skating and everything i see from noah just looks like something brenda would wear you know when he's going to go and surf in the morning or going to go skate and catch up with some friends it just seems very much like him and i guess like i like i've like I'm, a lot of people would assume most of the best brands that i would like or that people are fans of are brands that are a real reflection of their owner of their creative director person actually making it it looks like an extension of themselves they just you know it looks like they're having the best the, the best time of their life just making 
being close, they would wear themselves. And by, you know, by luck, um, the general public, like you and I, are fans of it too. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Noah. And I guess from looking on the streets from Shoreditch and East London, a lot of people are big fans of Noah too. This is their Spring Summer 2019 collection. Um, they've reintroduced a lot of the check again, which I think was, I saw maybe used in the previous collections. A nice... Uh, kind of like polygon i don't know print t-shirt here that would actually look really good on a short pattern oh they make some of the best shorts they're probably a little bit too expensive for my budget but in terms of summer shorts to wear for festivals and stuff i'm surprised i don't see more kids wearing them in festivals they make some of the best shorts i've seen honestly and obviously because for the most part brendan actually wears brendan i think designed these shorts in terms of day-to-day -day wear so they're not they're not just swim shorts that you can't put stuff in the pockets and they you know sometimes shorts you get the pockets are too small and stuff falls out but these shorts are actually constructed well they have nice deep pockets they're really light they look they you could they could be worn you know for some brunch meet some friends they could be worn to go to a bar as long as they let you in and stuff but like you know just generally really really nice shorts i think they're really um underrated shorts that they make out there so i haven't mentioned it enough yet but definitely check out their shorts <laughs> but yeah a nice denim jacket here or classic trucker jacket that you'd call for maybe supreme that would do nice olive short there a pair of wallabies not sure if that's part of the collaboration um a nice uh, long sleeve top there with polka dot and i always I'm, I'm i've been a big fan of the logo just on the outside it reminds me of like old 80s uh skatewear stuff you know the little logo here on the outside i'm a big fan of that so similar to the little logo that you know um hiroshi fujiwara sort of invented that placement of the logo on the sleeve i really like the logo just on the outside of the actual garment i think double taps do a few of the boots the boots of too and again a nice tone because just I've, i like the colors right i just love the colors in, in an era where you know a lot of people are wearing muted colors and blacks and stuff it rem again it reminds me a lot of the color palette you'd see from japanese brands like capital and stuff that's probably why they're so popular and needles um of course they make really amazing clothing but just the you know the playfulness inside the clothing just the color palette you even see with cactus flea plant cat cactus flea um they make a lot of the same sort of like they use a lot of the same sort of bright color palettes too um of course on just standard designs but it's something that gives that bit of a pop when you're using such bright colors so loads of polka dots and stripes again the styling is always on point uh you got the oh i've actually seen these trousers online on the store they're one of my favorites actually these sort of like splatter uh print looking trousers with the navy blue hoodie which is again it's a classic that navy blue hoodie with a cross or the 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 logo hoodie with a cross here i'm not sure if that's a coach jacket on the left but that looks really nice cut the coach jacket looks amazing it's cut a little bit shorter than a regular coach jacket looks by the looks of it um nice pair of shorts converse um one stars i wish i, I wish my feet were slim enough to wear them but unfortunately i've got fucking clown feet um clown flipper feet so i can't necessarily do that but they look awesome on that dude there um i like this jumper oh is that a shirt a short sleeve shirt actually i like that that crew neck logo print is also really nice uh nice little bomber jacket there he's he's done this a lot with those buttons isn't it um i've seen um brendan do a lot of that with, uh, with those buttons actually at the back pocket of these where's where that where's that where's that trousers oh there he's, he's used those buttons quite often i think in another pair and another jacket as also i saw he used those, those buttons i think he's a big fan well whatever that button is called i think brendan's a big fan of those i've seen them a few in a few other collections um again that jacket looks awesome i love the shorts uh, i think there's a brand what's the sh um there's a brand of shoes that they make right i forgot the brand of it what well, he's a uh, owner of brendan but those might be it i think they're spy walkers or something i forgot the name of it um there again we've got some nice collection of t-shirts there nice pair of trousers he makes a really good work pant that's a nice sort of half um half a zip anorak there looks really nice sweatpants again wherever those um deck shoes are they're really nice aren't they sort of like an update on like a vans um old uh, vans authentic but done a little bit with, i don't know a little bit more panache i really like the look of those they look fucking awesome Again, the styling is always great on the Noah stuff. You can't really go wrong with it. It makes you want to buy literally everything, which is probably the uh, a good marquee of a very, very good, a good mark for a very good um, lookbook. Again, nice pinstripe trousers there and a matching jacket. Again, great shoes. The, the signature is sort of like Noah belt. Again, nice shorts there to wear for the festival season tops again oh those sandals are great and i'm not a big fan of showing my toes but those sandals look amazing no wow and wherever those jeans what are they like chore jacket are they like um a uh, carpenter style denim is that what you'd call that right with that little little tap on the outside would you call that carpenter style denim i'm not too sure it look really nice um nice pair of red shorts there great great color again it's really hard to find that kind of tone of red on shorts i like that with the 
um, front pocket on the t-shirt and then the logo just below the little front pocket there that's a very good placement I remember my friend actually doing the same thing with his brand he had like a he had like a little brand and he put the logo on the inside of the pocket so you couldn't actually see it, it was actually on the inside which was quite a little which was quite a little cool application of it actually I thought for the most part probably a bitch to make because that means you have to construct the whole thing and then with screen prints and then put the pockets on top but you know the details always matter again nice pair of trousers green shirt like just amazing all, all of it I would like I want everything in this fucking collection and again that's whatever what, what what would you call that are those cherries are little flowers all over it it's a chore jacket too that looks amazing and it comes with the in trousers too so i think that'll be really popular with people i think for the most part and the tone of those shorts look really awesome they've not even been rolled up as well so yeah check out um brendan babson's um noah spring 2019 i think all this stuff is available now because i'm pretty sure i saw the trousers online if you scroll down here let's check there what does it say on the list it's no point reading hype piece articles, but sometimes they will tell you. But yeah, it's all in store now, available online. Noah NY, one of my favorite streetwear brands out there at the moment. Uh, absolutely smashing it. Absolutely smashing it. Next here, we have Adidas Originals collaborating with NTS Radio. Interesting. NTS, uh, as you guys are aware, is a London based online radio show that all of the hipsters are a fan of. I don't think I've ever met anyone that's into electronic music or going out culture or club culture or the scene or whatever it may be that doesn't listen to NTS music. I'm probably the only person that doesn't listen to NTS radio. I don't think I've ever listened to a show in my life. Not because of it being bad, just because, you know, I don't really listen to shows like that. Um, I might catch the odd mix here and there from people like... um. I listen to stuff on Beats and Space and random... Uh, but nowadays, I have tended to... Um, which m I probably would be susceptible to listening to more NTS Radio because I've been listening to... I use this website called Mixes DM where they have a complete database of lo these mix loads of mixes from you know, DJs the worldwide that cover the whole span of electronic music. So sometimes you might stumble across some stuff, but I'm not tuning into people's shows and stuff. I have a lot of friends that are on there and do their shows. So um, what you call it, credit to them. And NTS has gone from strength to strength. Um, and yeah, they're kind of gaining global exposure, global recognition. Um, now, um, it kind of, at the beginning, it felt a little bit like an add-on of Boiler Room. Do you know what I mean? They were kind of, you know, kind of um, following in their footsteps. But now they've kind of both gone into totally two different, to two different positions or lanes for the most part. NTS is really trying to, you know, cultivate from the ground up, um, you know, impacting local communities and spreading that music global. And, you know, Boiler Room is doing sort of like the video representation of that and really making, you know, their own kind of original programming as well on the back of it. But anyway, um, NTS is kind of, you know, again, global recognition. It made sense that they probably collaborated with Adidas. Adidas do a lot of, you know, they might not do some of the, you know, more hype beastie collaborations that maybe Nike do, but what they do do is they do do a lot of like on the ground um, ear to the ground connecting with people that are actually moving culture within their scene and collaborating with them and i guess this nts collaboration is no different um again um to celebrate um, happy says the following to celebrate the immeasurable impact of NTS Radio, AS Original is honouring the British institution with a special capsule of soccer-inspired garments, tracksuits, and accompanying outwear, shorts, and t-shirts um, for NTS London Heritage. I wonder why it's soccer. Is it because they're doing a football tournament? The AS Stripe brand swerves around. Oh, okay, I'm not reading all this shit. They're just describing the clothes I'm seeing in my own eyes. NTS Collection launches on AS Original site, stores, and through net NTS distribution on May 25th. Below, check out the lookbook and listen to the Maggie Nichols and Peter New free jazz LP that inspired the NTS Radio Donuts U tagline, as well as the scope of the DJ schedule to commemorate the collection. So why are they doing this collection? Just because um, NTS is dope. Is it because of football? I wonder what it is. Are they doing a football tournament or something? Because they always do these, these little football tournaments, right? Where they get all the big brands and promoters and brands and stuff from London to go and play five-side football and shit. I'm not sure what it's about, but I like the clothes anyway, regardless. That that top, that hoodie top is really nice. Um, they've got a nice little track jacket here with NTS. I, I like that, actually. That little placement just there on the, on the, on the collar. On one side, you've got the, the Clover AS logo. On the other side, you've got the NTS um, Classic logo, white on black. I'm not just. I'm not a fan of the back. Personally, I would probably take that off if I could. Probably take that back patch off. But again, it's nothing to really squirm about. Oh, this long sleeve top. This long sleeve football top looks really nice. Very much '90s inspired. Uh, polygonish print on the front with some stripes on the side, black and grey. With nice. I like that logo actually. Into radio dot com. Uh, dot live. Sorry. A nice another another nice football jersey here again. What is that on the inside? Peppers and spice. I wonder if that's the is that at the restaurant next door to it? Because NTS Radio is on um, what's that square called? Um, the square where it's hosted, wherever it's in Dawson, and there's a little Caribbean restaurant on the corner of it too, right? That does um barbecue outside with a massive 
grilled drum. I wonder if that is the shop that they're referencing, Peppers and Spice. Maybe they will get their lunch from there. Um, again, nice little top. The tracksuit pants, oh, they look cool. Wear that with a tracksuit, that look fucking awesome. I'm actually a fan of that. I'd actually wear that. It's a bit, again, I, I would feel, because Boiler Room make a lot of really good merch too, right? But I'd always feel a bit cringe wearing Boiler Room merch. Like, if you don't work there and you have a DJ day, it just feels a bit, Nyeh. do you know what I mean? It's like people that wear um, X, that XL Radio bomber jacket. I mean, XL Recordings bomber jacket. It's like, I remember seeing a girl wearing it for the first time, I think a few years ago, just before, I think just before they were about to re-release it. And I thought that looked amazing. She looked cool in it and she happened to intern there. So that made the story a little bit better. And it was a vintage jacket that her boss gave her to wear because I think they were looking to bring it back into bring it back into market. And I guess she was a cool person. So, you know, he went to kind of test the waters with it. But just buying an XL recordings jacket is a bit strange, you know? Well, don't you think? It's like, no, no one would wear an Atlantic Records. I guess it's different because Atlantic that probably doesn't have the the cultural relevancy that maybe XL does, but I don't know. I feel a bit strange wearing a NTS boiler room or XL recordings merch. If I didn't have anything to do with the place, I didn't have a recording on there. I didn't collaborate with anyone. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I, I would wear this tracksuit. That, that being said, I would wear the tracksuit again. The tracksuit was fucking awesome. I've been found the shorts and yeah, it looks pretty cool. I'd probably wear the football gear too, you know, because I'm just, I've never really been the biggest fan of wearing, um, you know, actual replica jerseys from teams and playing football in it, you know, like sort of like adult pretend play. It kind of reminds you of those, you know, those dudes that ride their bicycles on the weekend and wear the entire gear, right? It's a bit fork it wankerish. Um, I'd much rather just wear like a, a plain Nike top and shorts. Football obviously inspired, but not like a team thing. It's like, what? Well, I'm pretending I'm pretending I play for United or something. I don't, obviously. That's why I'm playing in this five side football pitch in the middle of Shoreditch. Um, I'd probably prefer to wear this sort of stuff to actually play football in. At least it's got something about it and it's a bit different than the actual football gear. But yeah, check that out. It's going to come out when? May 25th, they said, right? On In all, I'm assuming most of the, you know, Adidas um, and that's Lee Scratch Perry there. Um, uh, what you call it? Modeling some of it. Oh, some pictures here of Lee Scratch Perry wearing it. Let's check him out too. What, do, what trains has he got on there? They let, they let Lee Scratch Perry wear some Timberlands with, with this, of course, in it. They can't really tell him what to wear, I guess, shoes wise, but it's lows. Wearing a pair of Timberlands with this whole collection. I'm not sure who this young lady is on the bed or in the bathroom. Uh, again, oh, so some more pictures of some people and just wearing it. That top looks really nice, doesn't it? Right, so on the bed there too. That's really nice. Oh, there's James there wearing the top two. That looks really nice too. I like that. I like this. Yeah, that that jersey looks really nice actually. Some good lookbook pictures of it. Um, yeah, that tracksuit is fucking banging. That's probably the best piece in there, and it got some socks as well. Ooh, that jacket looks so good, doesn't it? That jacket looks amazing. I'm a big fan of it. Get in there, that jacket. But yeah, check it out. May 20th, coming out very, very soon at retailers near you. Next tab. We have here, Kanye West sits down with David Letterman, David Letterman on my next guest needs no information, needs no instruction. Sorry. Season two of the show. Did anyone watch season one? I didn't watch it. Um... David Letterman, of course, legendary um, talk show host in America, went um, famously quit and decided to grow his beard and get all, you know, um, philosophical with life. And then he came back and decided to do a show on his own terms. And this is what he presented with Net with Netflix. My next guest needs an introduction. It's had a quite a good reaction. I'm pretty sure I've seen, read some good reviews about it. Um, for David Letterman, obviously, it's the best case scenario for him because he doesn't have to be on Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon television. Every Saturday, he can just kind of do these shows, chunk them in and just kind of release them in seasons. Um, on Netflix, the obviously, the notable addition on this show is Kanye West, you know. Um, uh, I'm not too sure how I feel about watching him talk about his bipolar um disease or his mental health in general i'm a bit tired of it i think i've come to i've come to grips over the years i think you know the older you get the more stuff starts seem to make sense to you and i guess it's, it's kind of a bit sad for me to say but i think when i was younger i sort of maybe looked up to kanye a lot more than i than i probably should have right he probably guided a lot of my or inspired a lot of the way that i think about things and how i view the world and how i view my place in the world being a young black creative and stuff but the older you get, the more you read, the more experiences you gain um, along this fucking crazy thing we call life, the less you start to really take any notice or any sort of heed to what an artist or an entertainer has to say about life or any sort of social political climate or anything. You just don't take notice of it. I'd rather go to a book. I'd rather go to a person or a person's who actually study this sort of stuff and actually have a rational, who actually have a rational point of view, who have considered loads of different ideas, 
who are really trying to get to the core of the issue, really trying to answer some really difficult questions, as opposed to listening to somebody who kind of, you know, part time decides to dip into some um, social activities and dig, you know, point, you know, dip his toes in it and end up causing a, an entire shitstorm by deciding he wants to refer to Donald Trump as a father he never had. So I'm not too sure if I really want to do that. But regardless, the trailer looks really cool. Um, um, I'll play a little bit of it of you now and then we'll kind of move on. If Velcro had been invented first, would there be zippers? You know, it's a really, it's really a deep question. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. Uh, there's a, uh, there's, you see? <laughs> Have a seat. Please welcome our guest here tonight. Some decent, what, what do you recognize there? Kanye West, oh. Tiffany Haddish, um, who else is on there? Lewis Hamilton and a few other people, right? Lewis Hamilton, I'm really interested to hear of because I don't really listen, again, I don't follow Formula One, maybe I don't know, but you don't really hear Lewis Hamilton speak too often, do you? Um, or candidly in that regard. I want to, I'd like to hear him speak a lot, I speak a lot more about his life and, you know, especially nowadays, what it must mean to be, you know, especially in this era, to be like a rock star F1 driver, right? It wasn't a thing back in the day. It was probably just, you know, um, gearheads that were just wanking over you. Now you're like, you know, you have models falling over your feet. You get invited to the Met Gala and stuff. You have brand. I don't know. Do, is there is there an athlete in the world, an athlete or, you know, whatever they may be called, who has more brand sponsorships than an F1 driver, right? They're sponsored by literally everyone under the sun. The amount of commercials they do is insane. Insane. Um, I wonder if he's going to ask him about the whole tax thing, you know, living in, um, having your registered address be in Monaco and shit. Be interested to hear him speak. When you're bipolar, you have a potential to ramp up and it can take you to a point where you start acting erratic, mm -hmm. as TMZ will put it. Uh, <laughs> Were you ostracized in high school? Or? No, we'd be on dates with our boyfriends and run into the bathroom and make out and go back to our boyfriends. That's amazing. <laughs> that happened to me. <laughs> Going to some of the auditions, I've been told too black, are you too light, are you too ghetto, not ghetto enough. I've been rejected all my life. And it, oh. but yeah, it looks cool. Um, loads of people, Melinda Gates, obviously. Um, I'm assuming Bill Gates' wife, right? I'm assuming by the most of our of it. So yeah, it looks cool. Coming out May thirty, May thirty first or end of May. Uh, check that out if you're that way inclined to hear some of uh, these celebrities talk about their lives and all that absolute malarkey next on the tab we have here these god awful shoes right um i'm not sure what the fuck is going on here and somehow uh, <laughs> they disabled the comments on this post as well <laughs> holy shit what the fuck are these what you know you know that what are, what are those this is i know that meme's dead now but what are those needs to come back for these Hush Puppies brings back a model that predates the chunky trend. Or Hush Puppies brings back a model no one asks for. Or Hush Puppies tries to get involved in the chunky shoes trend. Or Hush Puppy brings back the fucking awfulest shoes I've seen in my life. Like, wow, these are god awful. Um, again, god awful, but there's a part of me that thinks if one of these like Japanese dudes who are reading these magazines, right? If one of these Japanese dudes from a magazine like this, from a magazine like Asayan, you can't see it from there, but if one of these Japanese dudes, these streetwear Japanese guys wore them, I think they might be able to get away with them. I think they could make them look cool. But I, as a young black dude who prefers to wear trainers like these, I don't think, you know, to say chunky shoe trend, I don't think these wave runners look anything like those bloody, I don't know what they're called. I, those, those are the kind of shoes where you look down and you can't tell what's right or left short, innit? They're that squared off. But they don't think those those look like anything like to do with wave runners. They just look like I don't know. And again, Velcro shoes. There's gonna be a time right where Velcro shoes come back in, right? Because I'm sure there's a time where wearing shoes like these in your life, you look like an absolute dullard, right? Fix old shoes, loads of paneling, um, the colors are all over the place. I know there was you know there was a time when that's like that looked stupid, but Velcro shoes, wow. And they don't even drop right. How do you make Velcro shoes look like you know? Anyway, um, so um, these shoes are god awful. They've got a massive strap on the outside. There's no more pictures of them. Just what I see here. They're sort of they sort of look like the shoes you'd see at like a shoe zone, right? With like a bit of a sneakery-ish sole. The sole isn't even that chunky, really, for the looks of it. Um, they've got a massive Velcro strap on the front. It's sort of like a loafer shape with a square box toe on it. And again, it's the kind of shoe that you couldn't tell what's your left foot and right foot. 
Um, they come in a range of pastel colors, if that's your way inclined, an off-white, a sort of peach, a lilac, and a sky blue. Um, uh, yeah, wow, super horrendous. What's the text say? Um, the text says this, trends... <laughs> you can't make you can't make that shoe and then start your text with trends because i don't know if that what trend that is but you, you know the trend of ugly shoe this is like ugly shoe with a capital u this is another level trends tend to be fickle but rather than bending to the will of the culture hush puppies looked to its own archive for making this modern it's modest dad shoe the label has tapped into its catalog of over 60 years of design to revive the power walker <laughs> Yo, if you see an influencer wearing these on Instagram, they got paid the massive, the biggest check of their lives. Like, there's no way an influencer can wear these and still keep your credibility. That's the thing that I love about the old school influencers like Hiroshi Fujiwara and stuff here yeah, from back in the day. Where is it? It's from here. There you go. I've got this book, right, from Hiroshi Fujiwara uh, called Personal Effects. It's a collection of all his. Um, um, it's a personal of, of all his personal items, stuff that he's kind of collected over the years, some collaborations, some whatever. But if you read a if you leave any interview with um, Hiroshi Fujiwara, he really credits himself on only collaborating with on only collaborating with brands that make the things that he actually likes. So much so that over the years, he's probably been the only person who's been able to kind of you know jump from brand to brand, some of them competing and not have any kind of conflict of interest, right? All the brands kind of want to stamp have these kind of Thunderbolt logo stamped on the side of these items. But that comes from an era of influencer where you went out and bought the stuff that you liked, showcased it on your socials or your on your blog. And make, social media was really a thing back then. But I remember I used to do that quite often, and you get reached out by companies about, "Hey, we like what you read, read, read about our, our company. Here's some free stuff." That's how you did it back in the day. But nowadays, kids are just will take any collaboration just to get a check, right? And for me, I think if I was a kid and if I was 16, I was following an influencer and I saw him posted up at London Fashion Week wearing these fucking god awful shoes, I stopped following him. Like I stop, I'd be like, you know what? It's enough. Done. We're not. We're not. We're not. You've you've lost a follower in me because these are horrendous. But anyway, let's let's continue with the copy because um, somebody had to write this. Um, worn by health conscious ge geratics, um, adorned by sardonic art school kids. Sardonic art school kids. What the fuck is sardonic? Um, the 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 the, the look up sardonic. What is sardonic? Sardonic. Uh, grimly mocking or cynical attempted at sardonic. If it's sardonic is mocking. So what? Sarcastic sneering art school kids. Why do you want the sneering art school kid to wear your shoe? That's a weird way in it to describe your uh, potential customer. But hey, what do I know? The label's reissue brings back its tried and tried and trusted construction of a new generation. Um, uh, to a new generation. Bulky features that have excited the footwear zeitgeist are present in a duo of restrained uh, restrained options. Whereas, what? Bulky features that have excited footwear zeitgeist are, pres are present in a duo of restrained options. Wearers can choose whether either Velcro or Lace. Oh, Velcro or Lace. Blech. The imprint extends a modern touch by adding colors to the sneakers at so old and new fans can style their ensembles in a variety of hues. The Power Walk is available today for nine 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 ninety five. Okay, let's see the website. Oh my fucking God, Power Walker. This is terrible. Honestly, I'm out, I'm out. That picture there at the front or the top, right? I'm out straight away, I'm out, I'm out. And why they give me notifications of offers? I don't care about your offer, I'm out. I'm out straight away. Out, 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 X, gone, I'm out. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I guess if you want them, go get them. They're $100. I'm not sure why you'd want to wear these with all the other shoes out there available on the market. But, you know, we will have our own taste. But, wow, these are absolutely terrible. Probably the worst shoe I've seen this year. Easily the worst shoe I've seen this year. Mamma mia. Anyway, next type. Come on, load, 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 load. Actually, you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to X all these off so I have something to load upon. Let's take all these off the screen. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Next, interns at Facebook and Amazon and Google are getting paid more than the average American. Whoa, crazy. You're telling me companies that employ some of the most smartest and capable people within their particular niche are them paying people across the board higher than regular jobs out there? No way. Come on, sometimes these headlines, it's like, what do you expect? Of course they'd get paid a lot more than I mean, just like, you know, they're highly comfortable jobs. Hasn't Google got, has, doesn't Google have them one of the most strenuous, um, 
uh, application processes out there in the job market. I'm pretty sure I read that in my book as well. Like it's a crazy, crazy process to even get an internship. So I'm not surprised that if they come on, if you make me jump through that many hoops to get an internship, you better pay me well, or the experience better be like you know tenfold what I get anywhere else. Because I think that's also part of the the thing that people don't take into account. If you're working at Facebook, Amazon, or Google, that experience being an intern, even if you don't get hired there, is probably worth a lot more than working at some you know god awful startup that no one has any knowledge of, right? That Google, Facebook, and Amazon uh, stamp on your CV can go a long, long way, especially in Silicon Valley land. But let's read the article anyway. Um, Glassdoor says, in a, in a report shared today, the highest paid interns are placed on a table. And coming in number one is Facebook, who offers up a medium monthly salary of $8,000. But again, if you're working at Facebook as an intern, I don't know where the offices are based, but I guess the cost of living there is going to be quite high. So even if it's $8,000 a month, it's still not, it's probably still, it still doesn't come close to kind of, you know, ensuring that you have a good um, standard of living. But again, like I said, if I'm an, if I'm a kid and I have the means and I can go over to Facebook and I can give them a year or a year and a half of my life on an internship, it's worth whatever they give me. If they, even if they paid me a hundred dollars a month, a thousand dollars a month, I take, I'd snap their arm off, man. That experience is, is, invaluable uh coming in second is amazon who pays its interns a medium monthly salary of seven thousand seven hundred and twenty five um uh, followed by salesforce again really niche uh services and products you know that if you're an expert of it at that level then you should get paid that much you get paid seven thousand six hundred and sixty seven uh rounding out top five are google at seven thousand five hundred and microsoft at seven thousand two thousand and fifty but again if you went to intern for these places and they were giving you and they're only paying you nine hundred dollars a month you would be a little bit you know your face will be a little bit out, put out of place, you know? It should make sense that a place as, you know, comfortable as these places will be charging these kind of rates to, first of all, to attract the talent and also you get the best talent to pick from and also, you know, for the people that work in there, there's an incentive to work there and do the best work possible. So again, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I think if I was a kid now, oof, I'd be I'd be literally biting over tooth and claw to try and get an internship there. I wouldn't care about Nike, Adidas, all these kind of cool places. I'd be going where the fucking, where the future lies. Facebook, Amazon, and Google. Put your politics to the side, you know, forget about the privacy stuff, whatever, blah, blah, the politics. Just to get an experience of working in those companies that are going to obviously, you know, uh, lay the foundation for what the future is. And again, you don't need to work there just to kind of get the experience so you can then set up your own little mini shop, whatever, maybe your agency it will be invaluable. So here they are, the top, Again, uh, most of the most of the ties, most of the places that pay the best for interns are the places that everyone wants to work at, right? Boeing, Delhi, KPMG, Cisco, uh, Intel, Visa, Goldman and Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Pay Media. Again, all these places though, most of their corporate offices are in places that you know the cost of living is super high. So it's not like you're. It's not like you're, you know, you're paying nine hundred dollars for a studio apartment and you're pocketing the rest of the salary. A lot of that money is going just to kind of live and to kind of get about, get around town, Uber, all these sort of places. But yeah, really, really cool. Highest paying entry level jobs, uh, business analyst. Okay, this is a cool little list there. Data scientist at ninety five entry level. That's also, I guess, all these lists of of entry level jobs should be the ones that kids should be aiming to try and get degrees in, for the most part, right? Um, number one, data scientist at ninety five thousand a year. Software engineer, ninety thousand a year. Product manager, eighty. Now I see a lot of those jobs everywhere. I wonder what product manager actually does day to day. I would actually like to learn how to do that um, myself, uh, for j just for the sake of it. Investment banking analyst gets eighty five grand, which explains why uh, probably um, Black China was willing to fake that she got into Harvard. Uh, product designer gets eighty five thousand, which again, which could mean you know, product design. Um, on both ends what i kind of studied in school and what's going on now with apps and stuff ux designer 73,000, implement implementation consultant 72 java developer 72 systems engineer 70 software developer 68 process engineer 68 wow 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 electrical engineer 66 again loads of really cool amazing uh, jobs which i'm sure if the you know Oh, no, no, I'm not going to get into that debate. But yeah, I recommend you check that out. Um, list of all the great places doing amazing things out there, um, paying their interns a high, high wage. So yeah, again, I, I'd, I'd, I'd do it in a heartbeat, man. If I was a kid and I wanted to get that experience, even now, if I felt like I was really, really heading to a roadblock, I would, re I, if I, if I had the money and I could afford to, I'd definitely give up half of my. I'd definitely give up a year or so to kind of work in these kind of places for you know just for the bare minimum, just to get the experience. 
but what do I know? Next tab, Sammy Ross teases newer Cold War Nike Air Force One colorway. These came out a while back. I think there's been three, two iterations. There's been the Air Force One mid, which was what, probably my favorite. The white and um, the, off, the white and gray mid with sort of like the laces that just cross over the top. And then he released a second pair, which I think was a Lowe's, which again featured here, which was black and white uh, colored by the most part. But yeah, they look fucking awesome. I love his fucking jewelry, man. Everyone's with the accessories. They're going in. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if this is um, Sammy Ross's jewelry he's making for his own collection or if this is something that he purchased from, I don't know, one of those uh, brands out there. But whatever that jewelry is on his sleeve, that looks fucking awesome. On his wrist, sorry, it looks really good. So the new pair looks like they just switched. They flipped um, the soles because I'm pretty sure the Air Force One Lowe's blacks were came with a black sole and then the whites came with a white sole. I think they just flipped the soles around. Um, again, I think they're going to be really popular. I like the look of them. I like the application. I like... Um, the non swoosh. I like how the laces are crossed at the top. Everything about it looks fucking awesome. This is a little video of it. I think of him doing um, using them right. Let's play it here. Looks pretty cool now. Yeah, big fan of those. Big, big, big fan. And then the second picture is just another video again, showing the outside of them again. Really, really nice shoe, man. I love how it's seamless in the front. No real paneling there. The little logo just in front of the toe box. You got the invisible swoosh, which is the punch-ins or the swoosh on the outside. Everything's seamless, isn't it, for the most part? I really like it, man. It's a nice shoe. Um, no real date of it coming out. It's just um, a little leak I think Sammy Ross put out there, but definitely check that out if you're that way inclined. Next tab, um, a look inside the APC new industrial-themed London store. APC have opened up a new London store in King's Cross, it looks like, right? That King's Cross... Um, building place where all the, the new universities are and stuff it looks fucking beautiful um apc's kind of um disappeared in it a little bit from the zach as from the conversation i remember it was like a, you know the number one brand especially during the old a uh, continuous lean blog days and stuff whatever and you know when i used to follow um oh, i forgot their names man. all those kind of new york um menswear influencer dudes the apc was like around everything was like on everyone's lips and everyone was talking about apc buying the jeans and then when they introduced that but is it butler series is it apc do the butler series the jeans that you, you can buy from them that have already been worn in by other people that have been trading for other jeans i'm pretty sure they do that but again apc is a staple in streetwear menswear industry a uh, john jean Dodo, or the, 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 i don't know how you pronounce his name <laughs> Patel. Anyway, the founder of APC has been instrumental in some of the careers of some of our, you know, um, main streetwear forefathers. So they always need to be, you know, you always tip their hat to them. And again, just a really consistent, um, strong brand over the years. Similar, similar way to like acne and stuff. Just doing god work out there this new king's cross store looks fucking gorgeous i love the little trick here with the mirrors to make the store and the space look bigger i never get tired of that sort of um interior design trick personally um looks really nice loads of great bags loads also it's a collection of women's wear and men's wear all inside there i'm assuming they're gonna have the collaborations there too i love this suspended um rail here too made of wood and pine there really nicely done put together nice cabinets oh that bag looks amazing yeah, at the top there beautiful 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 store I'm not sure what the flooring is love the flooring um tiles as well on there too yeah really really nice store i think it's just open recently um it is uh apc king's cross coles drop yard uh london n1c 4dq check it out if you're that way inclined really really nice interior design nicely well done um, another great store from APC. I don't think they have a shit store in their whole catalogue, to be honest, for the most part. So, yeah, well done to them. Next tab, we have a John Elliott Shrouds, a Nike LeBron Icon QS in triple black. John Elliott is sort of like a really big name in terms of New York or American uh, menswear, right? He doesn't. He's never really trans... He's not really been... Uh, He's not really been uh, taken on well here in the UK. But I think for the most part, a lot of those brands, especially the brands that some of the football footballers wear and some of the people from Love Island and stuff, I'd imagine this is the kind of stuff they'd wear. And, it, and a lot of them, when they make their own clothing, it tends to end up looking like John Elliott, right? Um, loads of really well-made uh, hoodies and tonal colours and maybe some jeans with rips in them and maybe awesome loads of all-white or pearl sort of stuff. Um, 
yeah, you know the kind of John Elliott sort of aesthetic. Um, and again, I think him and LeBron are really good friends. LeBron James is always at his shows when he's showing uh, during Fashion Week and shit. So I think this is probably no no mystery that this collaboration will come around. Probably doesn't make that much sense. John Elliott being a fashion brand, LeBron James being a basketball player. But you know, if you've if you're paying attention to basketball, you'd know that you know LeBron James seems to be making positional moves away from basketball. You know, the LA Lakers move seems to be a a big ploy for him to kind of stamp his mark on the internet entertainment industry so maybe this is kind of tied into it again um i'm not really a fan of wearing lebron shoes or anything to do with basketball outside of jordan retro so probably not the shoe for me but as a look they don't look too bad i guess if you're that way inclined you could probably style them and make them look really really good um it looks like the is the front of it see-through because uh, yeah the socks the socks they're wearing on this picture they sort of peek through the front um does that get my interest already maybe have i now spoken too soon and now i kind of want them maybe yes um <laughs> they look really nice here actually to be honest um they come with a, a part of the collection is a pair of these tie-dye socks which might harken back to um inspiration from lebron james recently he's been wearing a lot of, yeah maybe they're part of it he's been wearing a lot of you know colorful trainers and socks lately when he's been going to games and stuff he's been getting to his like kind of um uh, eccentric um outfit bag lately um lebron james although i did really like that outfit he wore when he wore that tom brown suit i thought it looked amazing probably looked the best i've seen tom brown wear seeing an actually built athletic guy squeeze into some tom brown made that fucking suit look better than what it's actually ever looked on the runway um which i'm sure is the reason why we're probably seeing a lot more black models used in tom brown um collections so far but yeah um i quite like the shoe actually i'm not mad at it i've got to be honest i'll probably take back what i said in the beginning generally lebron james icon qs way too many numbers or letters in the lane but hey uh they're gonna come out at the john anyway flagship store on may 22nd 23rd 24th and the limited drops accompanied by a set of tie-dye socks an online drop will then hit a john Lee store at 25th okay cool so that's a that's a good little drop in it so i think there'll be quite a lot available then right they're gonna come out four days in a row or for that four days in a row three days in store and then online they're pretty cool i quite like them especially if you can if your socks are going to peek through the front isn't it that's what, that's what we all want, isn't it? We want our socks to get shown. If it's got, you know, bubble around the complete outside of it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of them. I quite like them. I quite like them. Not gonna, not mad. Next tab. Reebok by Pia Moss Experiment Free Pink Set for Summer Ready Release. These look really nice, isn't it? Pia Moss is, again, a, another fashion label on everyone's lips at the moment. Do very interesting clothing. Um, and, yeah, these shoes look really nice. Um, they've sort of got, like, an invisible laces because there's a zip on the front of them um old school rebox i've got a video here showcasing some of it let's see what was it the first one with damon lawrence what's that got to do um okay let's check out the video and see what this has to do with the actual shoes pia moss with damon lawrence i'm assuming that's a famous basketball player right i really started to begin to settle into a life outside of basketball into the streets and uh deal with my scholarship I was basically fighting for my life. I was fighting a case, a criminal case. I had to eventually uh, cop a flu and do some time. And when all this stuff was happening, I found out that uh, I was going to be a father. I felt like I let my son down more than anyone else. So I just put in my mind that um, I have to get back to my son. So I did come home and I didn't know that I would put myself in a situation where I wouldn't be able to do for others what was done for me. So our program is a lot different than other programs. You cannot come in this gym if you do not go sit down in a classroom with an instructor. Oh, awesome. Very, very successful. We have a 100% college enrollment and we are a 98% college graduation rate. I was a private son high school student athlete. I endure prison. I make a difference in my community. Wow. My name is David Lawrence and I'm a ball in the that's awesome, man. I'm loving the socially conscious side of some of the releases at, at the moment. I think we saw a little bit with the Cactus Flea Market. Oh, I can't even say the name anyway, but you know what I mean, the Cactus Shoes. Um, I'm liking this whole um, social movement around the shoes. Um, instead of just doing a collaboration, just having it sit down on the shelves and just be it, what it is, but it's tied into something else, a bigger message, and highlighting someone like a Damon Lawrence is doing an amazing community initiative there with that basketball program he has going on. is super cool. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be probably more characters tied in or probably people that are going to be featuring as part of the collection. But yeah, I'm a real big fan of it, man. I think it's, again, something different than just putting out a shoe and just having it sit down on the shelves. There's a story tied to it. And for the most part, the shoes that I have at the moment that I'm really getting a lot of love out, out of the Tom Sachs even the kind of wave runners and you know kanye's kind of crazy journey to get to this point they've got a story tied to them that makes it a lot more special 
than just it just being a shoe because I think that kind of like dies over the, over time. And again, if you're gonna wear them as well, especially if you're not reselling them, I think it's nice to have a little bit of a story, something that you can kind of put your hat on and somebody ask you to you know what that shoe is about, what's the story behind it, blah blah. blah. You got something that you can talk about. And again, I'm a big fan of it. I like the look of them. Something different than what's on the market now at the moment. Um, when they're due to come out, they've got a date here. Da, 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 May 18th there 250 dollars check that out at all your local retailers next tab Ooh, Nike is reviving the 1996 Asia exclusive Air Force One low premium ivory snake this reminds me of all the old school Code.jp um, Air Force Ones if you remember back in the day those Code.jp Air Force Ones were probably the best colorways you've probably seen unfortunately some of the best colorways you've seen also didn't come in sizes above a size 9 or 10 because Japanese people have tiny feet damn them um so you had to kind of you know maybe uh squeeze into really smaller sizes i remember i had the coat what well, i forgot the snake skin ones i had i had another i had the atmos pair i had a pair of ones that were like purple that i sold i remember there being like a green a velvet green suede no sorry a suede green pair like super bright green like kelly green with like a white swoosh like low looks fucking beautiful the shape was better they didn't point up as much as the normal air force ones do nowadays they didn't have that weird banana foot that a really good silhouette just they just looked amazing sometimes you when you get them off of the yahoo auctions they'd come with the midsole would be slightly discolored just beautiful 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 and i guess nike are bringing those back so that's nice to see them um, again i think as of late Air Force Ones are probably, you know, um, the thing that probably uh, pays the rent at Nike. They probably sell millions of those a year without even making an effort. Um, JD Sports alone probably sells the, sells a lot of those, um, a huge percentage of those sales. But I like that they're kind of paying a lot more attention to because it feels like, especially again in East London, it, maybe I'm got a my pool of references is a bit small, but around East London, the places I'm in, I've seen a real, real big spike in people wearing white Air Force Ones, classic Air Force One colorways. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure if it's because, you know, again, it's probably the more comfortable, versatile version of wearing a Vans or a Converse. And again, for someone like me who has wider feet and it's probably a lot more um, versatile and stuff that I wear more comfortable, but I've seen a lot more people wearing Air Force Ones lately. So maybe it's to do with them recognizing it and they have a way of analyzing the numbers and seeing as being a spike of people buying Air Force Ones at size, at offspring, at end clothing, at Dove Street Market, and decide to flood the market with these sort of like um, staple classic kind of colorways. And now they've got this snake skin um white air force one looks amazing again i've got so many pairs of white air force ones that i just keep buying them i don't care because again i think it's one of those shoes that you can just keep wearing again and again and again you can never have too many pairs of these i don't think and they look fucking awesome all white upper with a snake skin uh, swoosh and a snake skin back tab for me just absolutely perfect Again, due to come out uh, May 22nd, priced at 145 a little bit more expensive than previous collections. Um, it's a premium Air Force One, I'm assuming, so the, the material should be a little bit more premium. I'm hoping so, you know, but, the, you know, sometimes Nike likes to sell you dreams. I like they don't have the little lace stay on them. I hate that little, little silver lace stay. It's one of my most annoying things. The first thing I do when I get a pair of Air Force Ones, re redo the laces and chuck away that little lace thing on the front. I think it looks fucking pathetic, but that's just me. Yeah, love it. It's crafted from a premium upper leather, premium leather, in crisp white and brown and green nits. Oh, it's green, is it? I don't. I didn't see the green there. Is that green? Okay, I don't see green there. But anyway, that's what, if Kyrie says green, it's green. So check that out. Coming out May twenty second. Snakeskin White Air Force Ones. Next on the list here, Bodega teases another version of its New Balance nine 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 seven S. Oof, these look fucking fire. Again, I'm not sure what's going on with New Balance. I'm not sure if this a uh, if if they've got a new creative director at the helm, if they're just cranking up the pressure because it's summer. But New Balance are spazzing out. It seems like these look fucking gorgeous. Nine 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 sevens. First of all, they're like black, grey, green upper, right? So some of my favorite colors. And the N is like a pop of yellow. The instep, the N on the instep has got like a weird sort of like 90s sort of like slash print on the inside. It reminds me of the old IBM logo. Then it's sort of, so it's sort of got this weird modular sole at the bottom. It's sort of like, sort of like it comes off in different compartments with a little yellow gel bit here on the inside. Um, they've got an M, M, M cap reveal, I think, whatever placement that is there. And again, New Balances for me are the perfect shoe because they fit my wide feet. They sometimes come in whips. They can come sometimes come get me wide and narrow. But they look fucking stupendous. The problem is they're probably going to be in limited supply. They're going to be hard to get. But I don't know how I'm going to get these pairs, but I will need to get them. And again, you wonder why I want them? Look how similar they look to these. There's, there is a trend of the what, what I like nowadays. They look very, very similar to um, they look what in feel, right, to um, 700s. But obviously, the, the, whoever designed these, I forgot his name. 
um, I've, I've read an interview with him recently on Hype Snobiety actually he came from that lineage of making some of the most iconic New Balances out there and a few other shoes so no surprise there I don't think there's a date on when they're meant to come out alongside the recently announced first delivery of its un- recently announced release of its first delivery of Upper Climbing Spruce Up Collection what's that? Have they got another shoe here they've released I don't know uh, Ink Cat Mustard Yellow so there's no date yeah no date on them at all wow they look so nice man so that's a sec- that's a second pair, and this is the first pair that they announced. What did they announce beforehand? Oh, that's the whole entire collection. Oh wow, look at those, mamma mia! The white pairs look so good, and they come in black too. So there's three colorways, right? Wow, there's those, and there's the this one here, the one that kids wearing here at the bottom. The shoes are quite nice too. Or black pair. This remind this is this to me is like vintage streetwear. This reminds me of like the go, the golden era back in the day. Just even have the way the graphics are done as well. Wow, the lookbooks done together. They got a pair of random Jordan's days wearing, but bloody hell. Let me see the. Oh, I like I like the the color contrast of the tail and the black the breads Jordan fours. Actually, I'm not mad at that. Can I see the other picture of the whites? Oof. Look how good these look. Mama mia, they look nice. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. Bodega snapped with these. Oh, that jacket. Wow. And short combo. Okay, cool. They snapped. They went ham. So yeah, check out Bodega. Looks like they're going crazy. They're not fucking around. When's this when's this stuff meant to, meant to be coming out? May 16th. Latest drop. Okay, let's see if it's available on there right now, actually. In case daddy wants to buy this right on YouTube. Wow, Bodega. Okay, cool. Let's see shop now delivery delivery number one. Let's see if they got it. Let's see the prices as well. I'm assuming it'll be about patter prices, right? So about eighty dollars for a sweatshirt and stuff. Wow, that's incredibly cheap. That jacket, that anorak, the packable anorak is one hundred sixty dollars. The shorts are ninety dollars, so you can get the entire thing for two fifty. That's insane. Probably the best bits in there, right? And obviously those um those blue teal pants that I like the look of. Wow looks so nice man so yeah check out uh, bodega first delivery out now available on their store and i'm assuming the shoes are going to come out whenever they come out right these shoes they look amazing wow so so sexy um next on the tabs here we have all black yeezy 350 v2s but no one cares about that um next we have dj guy gopro again no one cares about that then we have all oh, these matthew williams up and coming um bracelets roller coaster bracelets look fucking incredible um, of course, most of you guys are familiar with Alix and Matthew Williams, you know, from Ben Trill, uh, Virgil Abloh family, um, Aaron Preston and all those kind of dudes. He's gone off now and done Alix. Alix is sort of like our generation, Hel Lang. They're making some really iconic pieces. Some of their footwear is some of the best things I've seen out there. The accessories, the bags, the trousers. Um, of course, m- much of it has coming from um, Matthew's own amazing personal style which again goes back to what i said earlier some of the best designers that i've known or that i've seen online have been the ones i've been able to somehow translate their own personal style into a brand and you see that none other example exemplified than on matthew williams and these bracelets here my guy wow they look so nice there's these are prototypes they're not out yet at the moment they've had the same sort of clubs you have in the belt that i have somewhere around here but they've taken it a step further there's a video here of him kind of explaining some of it i think or just detailing how it opens up and stuff Look how cool that looks, man. Is that stainless steel or metal? I don't know what that is. That looks fucking incredible. Again, like our generation of getting like a Cartier or Chanel, uh, yeah, Cartier bracelet, right? That was basically what I'd get it for. If he, Imagine if he starts making these impressions metals. They, they, he says to make it like a gold or something. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Wow. Look at that. Look how cool that looks. Jesus Christ. Wait, clasp in. Of course, the watch he has next to it isn't bad either, is it? But look at that. Absolutely beautiful. He spazzed, man. He spazzed. Look at it. Yeah, it looks amazing. I'm not, it's not, no, no date wins come out. I think it's the early prototypes made in Austria. Massive bangle. It reminds me again of the old Wix Owens, massive kind of like braces he had. The super chunky ones that, that kind of like hanged off your wrist. A nice silver one, which is probably the one I'll, I'll, I'm going to get to match it. I'm usually wearing all loads of, loads of silver or stainless steel. Fuck me, that looks good. 
yeah, I'm all, I'm all game for it. Check those out, man. Elite's bracelets, um, roller coaster bracelets, not come out yet. They're probably still in development at the moment as we speak, but once they land, I'm pretty sure they're going to sell out pretty soon. But yeah, fuck, fuck me. Here they are, man. Elite's doing the God's work out here, doing God's work. Anyway, that's the Agostino's English show, actually. There, man, done. Number Episode number 190, what? Are we six, right? 96? 96. Thanks so much for tuning in. Last podcast of the week. As ever, if you need information regarding myself, click the link below. Agassinozinga.com. I'm DJing this Friday at the uh, Tap East. Uh, at my night called Tapped alongside my good, very good friend Afro Musa. So if you're in the area, come down to that. 5 p.m. until 11. And also next Saturday at the Heathcote and Star, um, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. But all information regarding that, you can find it on my website, excellentzinger.com. Check DJ gigs and all my listings are there. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you guys very, very soon for another episode of the show. Until then, peace, take care, and have a good weekend. <laughs>